So I wanted to create a brief video going over our new asset grouping feature. Some people think of it as linking assets. Some people think of parent-child relationships, but it's all the same. It's basically taking a group of assets, putting them together, and now you can move that group, check out that group, check it in. So just kind of wanted to show you how this works in Asset Cloud. I am going to search for an asset that I already have. So let me scan in this asset tag and it pulls up this laptop cart that I've created. I'm gonna click on this and go into the edit asset and I have a group tab. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make this be a group. Doing that allows me to add assets to it. And then from right here, I'm gonna click on add assets pulls up a list. I can filter this down. I have it filtered down to pull up my Dell Inspire laptops. So I'm going to check a few of these. And add them to that. I can always come in here and add additional assets. I can click on some and remove them. Now I wanna talk about these attributes. Is parent will be defined when I save this. So if I attach assets to another asset, it will make this be the parent. So that'll be checked after I save this because I've attached these assets to it. Transact as whole. By checking this, it's saying anytime you, you perform a transaction, it's going to default to do it on the entire group. So I want to check that. Audit as a whole. If this is checked, when I go do an audit, it's going to default for me to basically just check a box and say, yes, that group is there. If I don't check that, what it will do is I will have to actually go into the group and I will have to individually audit all of these assets associated with that group. I'll go through the audit in a second and, and show both scenarios. So let me save this. Now I'm just gonna click on that again. And you can see that is parent is checked because I attach those assets to it. Now I'm gonna come here to view groups. This is a way to see anything that I've defined as a group. Here is this laptop charging cart um, that I just did right here. I can expand that to see everything in it. Now one thing that I didn't mention while ago that I should have when I created this group and I associated these assets with it, if those assets were at a different location than this charging cart, it moved them to the site and location of that charging cart. So it performed a move if they were at a different location. Because now these are grouped, they're in the same place, they need to be at the same site and location. And it would record that information as a transaction, that move. I'm going to click on the charging cart and I'm going to come down here and go to checkout. So this brings me to the checkout page and you see down here, it's put in that laptop charging cart. Now this icon, this, this widget is saying, it's going to check out the entire group because that's the attribute set for that group is transact as whole. Now, if I click on this, I have an option. So I can say just the parent asset, the laptop cart, I don't wanna do any of the sub items or I can check out the entire group. Ch 
choose who I'm checking it out to and check it out. Now let me go back to the view groups. I'm going to go to that same group, but actually instead of clicking on the laptop cart, I'm just going to click on one of the laptops themselves. And I'm going to hit checkout. Again, it defaults to say, hey, you're going to check out the whole group. But since I clicked on that laptop, which was one of the child assets, I can come in here and say, no, I just want to check out 22004, which is the Dell Inspiron 17 3000 laptop. So if I click on that, now it's set up to only check out that one laptop and not the entire cart. <clears throat> Again, it defaults to the entire group because that is the attribute that we set for that group. But I do have the ability to override that. And this will perform the same way on the mobile. Let's go back to view groups. Now let's say that I want to move this. I'm going to go and hit move. Brings in the entire group. Where do we want to move it to? And then it'll move that. Now, I click on this. I don't have any options with the widget. The reason for that is, remember earlier when I said, when I add assets to that group, it would move them so they're all at the same site and location. When I'm grouping that, it does that. It doesn't make sense for me to move the laptop cart without moving everything that's grouped with it. So I can't move just the laptop cart and not the laptops. If I did need to do that, I would then either need to go ungroup it or go back to the attributes and turn off transact as whole for that. Now, I might, however, just move one of the laptops though. So I'm gonna expand that group and click on one of the laptops. Hit move. Again, defaults to perform the transaction on the entire group. But I have this option where I can click on the widget and say, no, I just want to do 22004, which is this Dell Inspiron laptop. And then I could move it. It would break it out of that group, though. So it's no longer going to be in that group when I do that. Let's take a look at the audit. Okay, I'm on the audit page and I have my site and location put in and I'm going to hit fetch assets. Now I have two groups in this audit with different audit attributes. This one right here is set up to audit as whole. This one right here is set up with that unchecked, not to audit as whole. <clears throat> so with this one set up as audit as whole, I can simply check this box and say it's audited the entire group. Now, I can expand this and see everything in it if I needed to. But I have the ability to just check that, and it audits that entire group. Now, I can override that and say, nope, I want to audit the assets individually in that group. So if I click on this, it's actually going to open up a new tab. Shows me up here where we are, and then that we're also we're auditing the laptop charging cart. So it shows everything in there. 
I can scan them. I can check them one by one. Hit complete audit. It closes that and takes you back to this page. Now this one is not set up as audit as whole. So I don't have the ability to just audit the whole group. I have to come in here audit the laptops individually inside the charging cart. I'm going to assume I'm going to pretend that they're all there. Takes me back. I can expand this and see all right, it shows me that these everything in here, here's when it was audited. Now, I also need to actually audit the cart itself, say that that was there. So check that. And then I would go and audit my individual assets in that site and location that are not in a group. So again, two ways that you can audit the group, depending on your attribute settings. I can just set up one as, as audit as whole, and I just check this, and it marks everything was there. Or I can go in individually and audit the assets individually inside the group. Earlier when I did the, the transactions, I did them from the group um, menu. I can, however, go in and do them from the actual transaction page. So I go to the move page and I can put in, that's not, yeah, that's, I scanned in the, the group ID, which is the laptop cart, the tag for that. And so it pulls it in, again, it pulls in the entire group to be moved. I can't override that because it's a move and this is the, the group ID, the parent asset, if you will. And so I could just come in here and say, where are we moving it to? The same with the checkout. I don't have to go to the view, view group tab. I can go to the checkout and scan one of the assets in the group and check it out. <clears throat> Now, when I created that group, I simply went into the asset that I was grouping everything to and came in here and just said add assets. That's the way I like, but there is another way that I can put assets into a group and it's via the move. I could scan in the laptop cart into the move to location. So now when I put in assets here, it's actually putting them into this group. So I can move things into the group. Now, when I created my group, it was a laptop cart and I just put things into the laptop cart. So you might not have things actually physically in something. You could have a group that's like a full workstation. And in the, the full workstation is a desktop, two monitors, a keyboard, a mouse, maybe you have a printer. So. I could group that. Now, there's a couple ways that I could do that. I could just go find the desktop PC and then attach, link the, the monitors, the keyboard, the mouse, and all of that to that desktop PC. And now the desktop PC is the, the parent asset, the group ID. <clears throat> Well, maybe since you're actually creating something a little different, it's it's now this complete workstation. You could actually create a new asset with a new tag called complete workstation. 
And then you could attach the desktop PC, the two monitors, the keyboard, the mouse, the printer to that. So now you see, okay, this is a complete workstation. So there's a couple of ways that you can, you can set up your groups like that. I hope this is helpful. Um, again, this is a little bit of a new feature that I thought a video would be helpful in explaining that. Um, we have a lot of other things that we're excited about in this release. Um, RFID is one of them. A lot of fun things um, on the roadmap for 2021 that we're excited about. You know, just want to say that we appreciate you guys as a customer. Um, hope you have great holidays and hope 2021 is great for you all. Thank you. Ugh, <clears throat>